Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's uh, the day where I'm going to look at all the vacuum fillers that I have in my collection and give you some of my thoughts. You know, even though the video is titled Hit to Hit, I don't think uh, there's going to be a winner in this comparison, so to say. It's, but I'll just give you some thoughts about all these pens that I have up here. So, uh, in order of the price, um, that's the Wingsung 3013, which I featured in a video a few, uh, few weeks ago. The Pen BBS 456, uh, we have the Twisby VAC 700R, we have the Pilot Custom 823, and we have the Homo Sapiens Visconti Bronze H. So um, I've also arranged, like I mentioned, the, the pens and price. So just to kind of get the price out of the way, uh, you can get the Wingsong for about two to three dollars pretty easily, I, I suppose. Uh, you can, uh, I think the pen BBS, I got it for about $40 US directly from the Etsy site, uh, their, their storefront. The VAC 700R um, it seems like the price has actually dropped. I might be wrong, but uh, it's been priced at uh, many common websites for about 65 US dollars. Custom um, 823 is a, it's a interesting one because uh, depend, it really depends where you get this particular pen. If you get this pen from uh, perhaps Japan or um, specific parallel import uh, places, you can dip below the $300 US mark pretty easily, right? So um, if not, if you buy from normal retailers, I, I suppose you probably can, I haven't checked the price for this, but probably can get this for the like the, in, in the mid, probably the mid uh, 200, 200s, that's my guess. And the last pen, uh, which is the Visconti Homo Sapiens, to be honest, I, I really didn't look at the price very much. I believe it is probably in the region of about uh, double uh, the custom 823. Uh, again, it, the price fluctuates depending on whether or not you, you, where you buy it, whether or not it's a sale or anything like that. I bought this new, so I mean, uh, which is the reason why I'm not so familiar in terms of what's the actual price. In Singapore, I, I've seen it in shops selling for over $1,000, uh, 1000 uh, Singapore dollars pretty easily. So uh, some common characteristics of all the pen. So while I have these pens out here, I'm going to put their dimensions in terms of the, the length of the pens. I'm going to uncap them. I think having the length of the pens well capped pretty useless, right? So I mean, uh, unless you're measuring the pens, whether or not they fit on in your pencil case, right? That, that might be important. But um, for the majority of, of us, uh, what's important is actually how long these pens are when they are uncapped and in the hand, right? So I'm just gonna un uncap all the pens to show you what they look like. Um, uh, like I mentioned, I'm going to put all the statistics in terms of their length uh, below. So basically, you don't you don't have to. Uh, the key the key takeaway for any pis, uh, any vacuum uh, filler pen that you buy, they are bound to be of a decent size, right? So I mean, most of the I mean, I mean, unless you're talking about the vac uh, vac mini from Twisby, which is pretty small, but all of these pens that you're looking at. They generally uh, have an uncapped length of uh, 13 centimeters, if not more. Uh, they all uh, are back weighted, so the balance point for nearly all these pens are going to be uh, at the back because of uh, this mechanism down here, which actually has the most weight. Uh, they all generally, I mean, the, the gist of it is all of them generally fit well in will fit well in anyone's hand, right? So that's the, the main point, right? Uh, the second thing uh, about these pens, which 
probably the reason why uh, you might be considering buying one of these is because of their capacity. Um, again, I would have put all the statistics in terms of capacity down on the on the, the bottom of the page earlier on, but most of them would have uh, easily, I would guess, two milliliters of space of, of uh, ink reservoir for you to write for a long time, right? And the reason for this is because of, uh, unlike uh, piston fillers, which actually have a piston um, somewhere in here uh, and ends up that the reservoir of a piston filler is only uh, here. Uh, the vac fillers normally have the entire chamber or the entire barrel uh, to store ink, right? Uh, there's only one uh, filling mechanism or type of pen that has more capacity than um, than the vacuum vacuum filler, and that's actually the probably the eyedropper type pens, right? Um, so let's take one, each one of these pens to kind of uh, take a look, right? So um, first of all, let's let's begin with uh, the Wingsong three zero one three. First obvious thing about this pen is, uh, and I'm going to do the same for all these pens. And we're going to be talking first of all about the build quality. So, and this is a big one because when you buy a pen or a fountain pen, I believe that you want a pen that's reusable and that can last a decent amount of time. Uh, you want to be able to refill ink um, and use this pen over and over again, right? So you don't you don't want something disposable. So. Uh, my feeling about the 3013 uh, sorry, is it is fairly well built. I don't think you would complain about uh, the quality of the plastics anywhere. Uh, the only complaint that I have, or rather my own experience, is that I experienced cracking uh, of in this pen, um, in one of the, the other pens, not this particular purple one, uh, down here, which is concerning. The other thing um, about this pen is that uh, it doesn't have uh, one of those, um, what do you call it, um, mechanisms to kind of prevent the, the nib from drying out, right? So, uh, but otherwise, it's, it's a decent pen uh, in terms of build quality. The other thing about, uh, and, and in the feel of the hand, I don't think many people would have many complaints about it. The plus point about this pen is being able to swap out the nib, I feel, because if you're not satisfied with the Wing Sung's nib, uh, they are okay, uh, but nothing spectacular. You can always swap these out just by pulling out the nib uh, for a, someone something in the Pilot uh, Metropolitan range, uh, the Pilot, uh, you know, the number four size uh, nib would fit in, in this, uh, section down here. So, and then looking at the pen BBS, uh, in terms of actual uh, positives, the build quality is a huge step up, or rather the feel, the feel in the hand, uh, in terms of the, the way the pen is made, uh, you can definitely see that it's one step up from this pen, right? It's uh, and in many ways, I would probably consider this to be like the entry point of vacuum fillers for the majority of the people. The danger of this particular pen is people might think of it as like a disposable item because it's like a so cheap, right? I think um, the, the 456 would be kind of the entry point for me to kind of uh, recommend to someone to kind of buy, right? So again, in the hand, it's very comfortable. Uh, the piston mechanism or that, that draws ink in and out of the vacuum uh, of, of the barrel down here is of another level compared to this pen, right? It's very, very secure and the feeling, I can't operate this, but the feeling when operating the mechanism is extremely smooth and you, you feel that it will last for a long time. Um, the, like I mentioned in the other video, I mean, in the video where I, I took a quick look of this pen, my major gripe about this pen is actually the nib, 
I mean, you might like this nib and I, I mean, it's probably my fault that I chose, I didn't really look closely at the nib options when I bought this particular pen. Uh, I'm, I'm not a biggest fan of this particular upturned nib, right? Uh, however, you do have a choice uh, when it comes to this in that uh, I, this is the 355, but it's its identical section to the to the 456. And as you can see, you can easily swap in um, a Jowo standard Jowo, uh, and it will fit fine, and it will write, in my opinion, way better than the stock nib. Right. The other thing about the Jowo that you'll notice is. Even though uh, these sections fit in a number six nib, and this technically is a number six nib, it is shorter than a Jowo standard uh, number six, uh, which is all the more reason why I think if you have a few of these spare Jowo nibs around uh, in other pens that you have, you can try to swap them and get a very different experience um, with the 456. Okay, so. Um, the other thing about the 456 is it has uh, those ink uh, saver or the, the one of those mechanisms to keep the, uh, the ink um, wet and prevent the nib from drying out, which is also another plus point. So moving on to the VAC 700, I feel, and that's what I named that video, is that this is like uh, it's probably the, a pen that maybe an architect would buy, right? It's a very practical, uh, it's not flashy at all. I mean, 456, you can get these in various finishes and um, I, I like this finish, right? It looks very, very unique. Um, and you can get them in like red and all sorts of very, very... Um, but the the, seven, the VAC 700R, um, you can only get it in this particular colorway. They might be limited editions, I'm not sure, and you can get the Iris version. And uh, it's, it still looks to me, even for the Iris version, to be very, very practical. Uh, I don't think anyone would bat an eyelid if you just pull up this pen in a meeting and start writing. Um, it's just that type of pen. It's very functional. Uh, it performs you know, beautifully. Uh, build quality, I have kind of... Uh, try to kind of press all the plastics everywhere and all that. The, the piston is as good as the as this pen. Uh, and generally I don't have any complaints, right? Um, the, the other, the main thing about uh, this particular pen, and that's actually the nib which you'll see later on, right? Is that uh, the nib performance of this extra fine Right. And I, I believe it will be the case even for any other uh, nib width that you buy. Uh, even though this is a Twisby extra, extra fine and it is made by Jowo, it is made to Twisby specs. And the way that they make it and the tuning, it's way superior to this extra fine, the, the stock Jowo num number six extra fine, right? In terms of smoothness, in terms of overall feeling, right? So really, the thinking man's uh, vacuum filler or thinking uh, woman's vacuum vacuum filler, I would wholeheartedly recommend this pen to um, to anyone, right? And then we move on to probably the most famous pen uh, or the most searched for pen on on the internet, which is the Custom Eight Twenty Three. Um, in terms of sequence of pens, which that in in which I bought. After I bought the 3013, the next pen that I bought was actually the 823, and I bought it pretty much blind, right? Just purely based on the recommendations, based on the reviews that um, they were around on the internet. And for this particular pen, I wouldn't say that the build quality uh, feels any better than um, these two other pens up here. I mean, uh, the plastics are decent. I, Nothing to write home about. Uh, piston works just as well as the other two pens which I showed you previously. Uh, what's different though is that the section, it's 
is way superior to the others, right? I mean, it might look like a very innocent uh, space down here, but to me, this section is one of the best in the business, right? It's 11 millimeters and it's, it's very comfortable. Uh, when people say that they can use this pen to write for pages and pages, they are not wrong, right? And that's the, probably because of the design of this section, which Pilot has taken years and years to kind of refine. The other thing about this pen is actually the nib. This nib, I would say is out of all these pens out here is probably my favorite. Uh, even though the Vis Visconti is smoother, uh, I would still prefer this particular nib. It's, it's uh, I would say it's a nib without fault almost, right? So, um, which you'll see when I do a very brief writing sample out there. Uh, you can swap the nib um, for nib units from the 743. Uh, and even the 845s and then you will get lots and lots of choice there as well. And last but not least, we, talk, we go to the Visconti. So the Visconti uh, is not like uh, these three pens down here where these are true double reservoir vacuum fillers in that um, Unlike these pens where if you close the knob all the way, right, and that will actually seals off this part of the pen um, from this part of the pen. Uh, and literally this is what they mean by have, meaning that you have a double reservoir. This pen is more like this one in that the, the rubber stopper that they use down here doesn't actually reach and seal off uh, this front section, which, is mean, which means it's a single reservoir pen you do not need to kind of loosen up the piston to write for long periods, right? So that's the defining characteristic of this pen. Um, and, you know, compared to the rest of the pens which I showed, this pen is very clearly one in the luxury realm, right? I would say that after you, after the 823, which is still a very utilitarian uh, functional uh, design, this pen would actually bring you to the, the realm of uh, a luxury pen. I mean, it's debatable. Some people might say I'm, I'm wrong, but I'm, to me, it's all about the feel, right? And in, the feel, in terms of feel in the hand, this pen obviously feels the best. Uh, so I'm not saying that any of these other pens don't feel good, but this pen definitely feels the best to write with. And it just gives you that uh, kind of feeling that you're you're really really uh you know up there in terms of the hobby right in terms of having the one of the best pens out there uh, the nib is also something that uh can say talk about uh, for this particular pen is that this nib is actually the smoothest out of all of them and if you like that buttery smoothness that feeling of writing with a nib that's Kind of like molten gold like super smooth this would be the one and i i don't have any uh, if, when you see in the writing sample later on it might not be the wettest in the writing sample but i feel that it is the wettest right um, what i didn't mention apologies is that i didn't mention for uh, these two pens as well they all have the ink uh, the mechanism to kind of stop the, the, the ink, the nib from drying out, right? So this is the only pen that doesn't have that. Uh, and obviously the Visconti also has, you can't tell, but it does have a, something to kind of uh, stop the nib from drying out. The, the only, or probably one of the only negatives about the Visconti is actually the fact that there's no way to tell uh, how much ink I have right now, right? Um, it could be that I, when I write and write and one day I've just run off ink because of the totally opaque nature of the body, which is that uh, uh, basaltic lava type uh, finish. So I'll just do a very quick uh, writing sample to show you uh, nib performance for all these pens. And I'm going to start off with the Visconti, right? So, um,
and like I mentioned beautifully smooth um, this is an extra fine but it's it's probably the you know the wettest and the the most you know the, the most wow uh, you know it, it has line variation in a way if you dare to press down on it uh, and it's a very very enjoyable uh, nib right so I mean if you like this type of soft nib uh, a nib that emphasizes that you're using a fountain pen soft wet uh, and so on this this would be it so moving on to the 823 and this one is in fine and straight off um, So I have to kind of explain that uh, this pen is actually using Waterman Mysterious Blue. Uh, Homo Sapiens is using uh, Inner Hope uh, by Pilot. And you know, this nib characteristic is, 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 the, is the one which I prefer, right? The nib is not uh, flexy at all, right? And it is the nib that has the, um, Smooth enough with a touch of feedback is what I would describe this nib as and that's my preferred option, right? So moving down the line uh, You get and I'm just going to open up. This is also loaded with mysterious blue. So this is the Twisby VAC 700R and this is an extra fine and I would rate in terms of nip performance, um, you know, this is very, very close, um, even though it's definitely not, sorry, I didn't do the, the wetness. It's definitely not uh, better than the A23's nip, but I would say it's it's decent enough and it's pretty close, right? So it's, it's also has um, relatively stiff nip, right? And it has that smoothness, the adequate smoothness with a touch of feedback, which I like, right? So, I mean, you know, if you're looking for this and if you're looking for an extra fine, that's what you would expect. Then moving down to uh, the stop nip, uh, stop fine nip. So this is the pen BBS uh, 456. And this is actually, sorry, this is the fine. And um, as you can see, it, it's adequately wet, right? I mean, it, uh, the main difference between this pen and, I mean, the, the kind of the, the drier pens is that if you take a drier pen and you do this, nothing would come out, right? I mean, without using any pressure at all. Compared to any of these pens, which I say it's wetter, right? If you do this, without any pressure at all, it writes still. So, I mean, that's always a good gauge to tell whether or not the pen is very wet or not, right? But I would say that this pen is adequately wet and uh, in terms of softness and line variation, uh, not a lot, right? So definitely not uh, a flex pen in, in any way. And then the last pen, which is actually the And this is in fine as well. So again, probably similar to the performance or the dryness of the 456. I mean, if I do this, it doesn't write at all, right? And, and with these cheaper pens, I, I typically dare to kind of flex a little bit more, right? So. I hope this gave you a good idea in terms of the nib performance. By the way, this is using uh, Shinkai, if I'm not wrong. Um, not exactly sure what, what the ink here, but it is a Iro Shizuku ink compared to these three, which are using Waterman Mysterious Blue. So I hope this, uh, this 
comparison or this head to head kind of uh, helped people who were looking at getting a vacuum filler. Um, if you want, I can actually do uh, follow ups on these pens to kind of uh, reassess them according to um, some other metrics which you are interested in. However, I think um, this is probably a good guide for you if you're considering any one of these pens. Uh, to kind of give you an idea uh, whether or not it, they are worthy to kind of add to your collection. So I hope you enjoyed uh, today's video. Again, um, as usual, please comment. I really enjoy uh, reading all your comments. Uh, give me a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Take care everyone. Bye-bye.